With our historical overview now complete, we can now turn to the development of a simpler model of what the world is made of. The first observation I had as a graduate student in the early 1980s was to see that the decay of a muon was extremely similar to the decay of a hydrogen atom from an excited state to its ground state. Here we see pictures of those two events. In the first drawing, we can see a muon decay. The muon decays into an electron plus two neutrinos. The neutrinos are either massless or nearly so. Hydrogen excited to its 2s state decays into its ground state and two massless photons. Now we know that hydrogen is composed of a positive nucleus and an orbiting electron and that it is bound together by a force mediated by the photon. Hence, as a starting point for a new model of nature, we should propose that the muon and electron may be composite particles composed of two subparticles which are bound by a force carried by the neutrino. To me, this seemed quite obvious. When you look at these two reactions, you can see clear evidence that there may be a similar underpinning. This slide puts into words what we have just seen in pictures on the previous slide. We noticed that lepton decay appears in many ways to be similar to the decay of hydrogen from its 2s state. A muon decays into an electron by emitting two neutrinos, while a hydrogen atom in its 2s state decays into a hydrogen atom in its 1s state by emitting two photons. Here we introduced the standard notation for neutrinos and photons by denoting a neutrino by the Greek letter nu and a photon by the Greek letter gamma. It is known that the hydrogen atom is very effectively modeled as a proton and an electron being bound by a photon, and therefore a starting point for our not-so-standard model is to propose that leptons consist of two new particles called prions bound by a neutrino. The word prion is meant to confer a precursor particle to the ones presently assumed to be elementary, and from this point forward I will refer to this model as a prion model. Here we see pictures of the hydrogen atom and our proposed prion model of leptons. In the hydrogen atom, an electron orbits a proton, with a force carried by a photon. In our proposed lepton model, we will propose an analogous substructure, with one particle orbiting the other. From experiment, we observe that hydrogen decays into its ground state by emitting photons and that a photon is the carrier of the force that binds it. Hence, since muons decay into electrons by emitting neutrinos, it follows that the force that binds our prions together will be carried by a neutrino. Therefore, a neutrino is shown as the binding quanta in the picture. At this point in the development, we will simply name the prions A and B, and we will investigate their properties later on in this webinar. I want to emphasize how simple the onset of this new elementary particle model is. Once again, let's look at the decay processes. We can see that the decay of hydrogen looks the same as the decay of a muon, except that one radiates photons and the other radiates neutrinos. So again, if we look at the proposed new model, I am simply proposing that the internal structure of the muon is composed similarly to the internal structure of hydrogen with one substituent orbiting another. Since the radiated particle is a neutrino instead of a photon, I am merely replacing the photon by a neutrino. It is all quite simple. We have just seen how our analogy with the hydrogen atom has led to a proposal that the muon will be in the 2s state of a composite system and that the electron could be in the 1s state. Of course, there is a third lepton, the tauon, that also has properties nearly identical to the muon and the electron, but with a heavier mass. In the model proposed here, it is easy to identify the tauon as being the 3s state of the same composite system. Note that the decay of the muon into the electron is first order forbidden, just as is the case of the decay of the hydrogen 2s state into the 1s state. This means that the muon, like hydrogen in the 2s state, is metastable, with a relatively long lifetime before it decays. P-states, or cascades from s-states through p-states, 
would be too short-lived to be observed. As long as the 2p state has a mass higher than the 3s state, the 3s state will also be metastable. Hence, only the 1s, 2s, and 3s states are observed in nature. And while the force binding the prion particles together is quite strong, neutrinos will still flow freely through matter as long as the cross-section for the interaction is low. This is similar to the fact that photons flow freely through glass. At this point in our development, we can now move on to assign some quantum numbers to our prions. A first point of analysis is to note that, to date, no experiment has shown the existence of free electric charge in fractional amounts. For that reason, we will begin by arbitrarily assigning our new A prion to have zero electric charge and our new B prion to have a charge of minus one. Since the neutrino has zero electric charge, this will leave our leptons as having a charge of minus one, as it must. Note that the antimatter leptons will have a charge of plus one, but we will deal with that topic later. Next, it is known that the neutrino has a half-integer spin. In this model, I am assuming that one quanta of the binding particle is contained within the composite particle, and hence the A and B prions can either be both fermions or both bosons. Recall that fermions are particles with half-integer spin, while bosons are particles with integer spin. By adding two fermions, one will get an integer value, and then adding the half-integer of the neutrino results in an overall half-integer spin. Similarly, adding the spin of two bosons results in an integer spin, and then adding the half-integer of the neutrino results in an overall half-integer spin. Recall that in all of these additions, spin is a vector quantity. So if we add a half-integer spin of the A with a half-integer spin of the B, we will get either 1 or 0 for the total spin. When we then add the half-integer of the neutrino, we will get either 1 half or 1 and a half. We will get 1 and a half if all three spins are aligned. Since leptons have 1 half integer spin, this means that all three spins cannot be aligned. A similar analysis can be done if the spin of the A and B are bosons, with integer values of spin, and that case will have similar constraints on the needed alignments. Here we will propose a new charge law for the prions. Since the force carrier has been proposed to be the neutrino, we will call this new charge a neutrinic charge. Following our analogy with the hydrogen atom, where an electrically negative particle orbits the positive nucleus, here we see a particle with a negative neutrinic charge orbiting a particle that has a positive neutrinic charge. We can arbitrarily assign a negative neutrinic charge to the B particle we proposed earlier and a positive neutrinic charge to the A particle we proposed earlier. Since the neutrinic charge is arbitrary, we are free to attach the electric charge to either of the particles and recall from the previous slide that we chose to assign the B particle with a negative electric charge while leaving the A particle with zero electric charge. The nomenclature introduced here is to have a trailing superscript indicate the electric charge on the prion and a preceding subscript indicating the neutrinic charge on the prion. With the total charge being equal to minus one, we see that our prion model for leptons gives the correct electric charge. With each substituent having the opposite neutrinic charge, we see that our construct has overall zero neutrinic charge. The result that stable particles have zero total neutrinic charge is the analogy of the fact that atoms also have zero total electric charge. Lastly, by having the A and B particles be either both fermions or both bosons, the total spin of the leptons can be arranged to, to be half integer, since the bound neutrino is itself a half integer spin particle. Hence, all quantum numbers of the leptons are obtained in a model that readily allows for three generations of leptons.